Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today I'm coming at you guys with another 2017-2018 NBA roster breakdown video. Today, taking a look at the Memphis Grizzlies of the Western Conference, a much improved Western Conference, that is, and the Grizzlies really have not improved too much in terms of pure talent over this past year. So, the Grizzlies are really an interesting team with what they did lose. They did lose a couple of players in Vince Carter, uh, Zach Randolph, Jermichael Green, um, you know, I think there's a couple, Tony Allen, so... Uh, there are some players, even on this uh, roster, actually, that are Tony Allen's on here. Um, some of these guys on the roster are not updated completely, unfortunately. So I won't be showcasing them uh, when we get into the individual player breakdowns. As we look at Mike Conley starting things out. And Mike Conley and Marcus Gasol round out the top guys in terms of the veterans of this team. And that's a good thing because they've gotten a lot younger, to be honest with you. And Mike Conley is really such a great player. I, I can't even believe sometimes how underrated he is when you look at what he's been able to do as a two-way guy you know last year 20 points per game first time in his career and, and just the fact that alone is kind of incredible because you don't even consider a guy like Mike Conley to be an all-star caliber player even with those type of numbers because there's just so much talent at the point guard position in the Western Conference and it's, and it's just unfortunate but Mike Conley in all honesty still just a really great player, especially as a two-way guy. You know, can play defense very well. I always thought he was one of the guys that was a little bit of a better defender against a Steph Curry type player, who is obviously you know impossible to guard. But um, or it, it just seems like that. But he, Conley's done a very solid job. I feel like in the past, you see second team all defense, never been an All Star, uh, which is just unbelievable. But again, the Western Conference is just loaded at that position. You have even guys. Like, not even naming Curry and Westbrook and Harden. Like, you have Damian Lillard and, and just these other, just so many other players, it feels like, that are just they're really solid at the, at the point guard level. Um, and that's why it just makes it so difficult to hit that all-star mark in the Western Conference. Um, but we look at Andrew Harrison here from Kentucky. And Harrison is a guy that is just sort of like one of those other players from Kentucky that just was not at the top tier but uh, was going to go in the draft. And he did as a second rounder and just hasn't really panned out thus far with Memphis. Uh, very young guy and that is one of the benefits of the Grizzlies squad is that they have do, lot, do have a lot of young players but he's really yet to find his place with Memphis and, and we'll see how that develops in the, in the future. I, I guess he's considered a point guard so you know him and Mario Chalmers is not on this list and he will be on the Grizzlies next year so another guy who will be fighting for a uh, roster spot slash I guess not even a roster spot but a position on you know in playing time and Wade Baldwin another guy doing that you saw him in the summer league this year if you watch the summer league with Memphis played pretty well at times um, you know Wade Baldwin is a guy that you know good frame I think he's around 6'4 6 6'5 6 you know he had uh, yeah 6'4 um, you know he shot the belt pretty well in the um, in, in the summer league but in the NBA he has yet to really make any impact so again the backup point guard position is still up for grabs, and we'll see how that pans out. As we look again, Mario Chalmers not on this roster, unfortunately. Um, and, and there's a number of other players because uh, I just passed up Tony Allen, who's no longer on the team as well. Um, ben McLemore will be joining the Memphis Grizzlies this year. But guys like um, I, I passed up uh, Raid. My apologies there, Raid Zagarok. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. I think James Ennis may or may not be on this roster. Um, Jarrell Martin is. Wayne Selden might not be on. Dylan Brooks is not on this uh, list, unfortunately. So a couple players missing. Uh, there might even be some more. I don't know if Troy Daniels made it, but there's some guys that just did not make the roster for, some, for whatever reason, uh, but they are going to be on the team next year. Um, just not in NBA 2K. You know, they just weren't on the 2K roster for whatever reason. It wasn't updated, but they actually will be with the Grizzlies next year. Uh, ben McLemore, another is a shooting guard that will be with the Grizzlies next year. For sure, definitely fighting at the two spot. And I don't know if what they're going to do there because I, I don't expect Troy Daniels to be the starter. You would think that Ben McLemore would get the starting position at the two. I, I'd kind of be shocked if he didn't. I don't know where else they would go unless they really wanted to go with like a Tyreek Evans position, which would be interesting because he's more of a facilitator. I think he could be really good off the bench, but uh, I don't know what they're going to do there. And Troy Daniels really shot the three ball pretty well last year as a two guard, a uh, 6'4 guy and uh, you know, a solid shooter, really good player, I think, to bring off the bench. I don't see him as a starter. I don't know if a lot of people really do, but still a really good piece. You know, Memphis offensively, 
at times you know they have struggled in the past so the fact that he's able to bring some offensive presence especially from the perimeter is really important especially again as we see the league can continue to move into that three-point range uh, you're gonna need those players and Speaking of um, offensive players, Tyreek Evans really early in his career was very good at you know scoring the basketball. You see 10, 15, 16, 14, 15. He can score the basketball on a solid basis, uh, and that was just from going down to the bottom. So he, earlier on, he, he was getting those higher numbers, and his later on, it just kind of dropped off down to 10 points per game last year. But was Rookie of the Year back in 2010, which is crazy, 20 points per game. Uh, was never known as being a perimeter shooter, but he's actually been able to develop his three-point jump shot a little bit uh, better and again people complain how they the the um the king screwed up in moving him to a uh, small forward position which you know is definitely a, a legitimate argument that can be made but with memphis i'm not sure how you can utilize them i mean i guess off the bench would be a great place because i feel like he's more of a facilitator and a driver guy so i don't know if he would really be worth putting in the starting lineup i think there's kind of a lot in the air for memphis i'm i'm really interested to hear what grizzlies fans think uh, what you guys think, basically, who is going to start where with Memphis? I mean, obviously, you have Conley at the one, Gasol at the five. But other than that, I think a lot of the positions are honestly up in the air. You would think Ben McLemore would nab the two spot. But Parsons, even as we look at him right here at the three spot, you know, his health has really been up in the air. So we don't really even know if he's going to be able to play for Memphis consistently, let alone start. So Parsons is a guy, obviously, I think they would expect to start at the three uh, given his contract and, and how you know highly he's been praised over the years and, and, and now his reputation has just gone down the drain for his injuries and how often he's been able to stay on the court and you know how effective he really is as a player so as a shooter you know there's been times where he's just been absolutely phenomenal you know he he really has lit games up with just his three-point ability and you know big frame 6'10 really tough guy to guard from the three-point line uh, great athleticism as well so when he's healthy, he's a very good small forward, but that's the thing. He's just rarely healthy. I guess he can also play power forward, so uh, maybe look out for that. But he just hasn't really been healthy and hasn't been able to stay on the court too often. As we look at James Ennis for Memphis at this moment right here, 6'7", uh, 210-pound forward out of, I believe, Long Beach State. or no, Cal State, my bad, Cal Beach. I guess Long Beach as well. Um, and, and a lot of these guys, to be honest with you, just don't get a lot of minutes. James Ennis didn't play too, uh, or actually did play a solid role with Memphis last year. 23 minutes per game last season. Played in 64 games, only averaged 6.7 points a game, uh, four rebounds. So, you know, I'm assuming he's, I mean, he's definitely going to get minutes this year. He's had more experience than a lot of these younger guys also. So that's a good thing. Um, it, which is crazy to think about because a lot of these because he doesn't have a ton of experience himself, but he still has more than a lot of these guys. And Deontay Davis does not have any, you know, very much experience at all. So I would expect Brandon Wright to be the backup center to Marcus Saul as, as Deontay Davis. Basically, he would play that. I guess they list him as a power forward spot. Um, I don't know what they're going to do at the power forward spot. I, I'm really curious to see what they do with that because, again, another position that's up in the air, and they no longer have the consistently, you know, efficient Zebo there. And speaking of, you know, efficient, he really hasn't been efficient this offseason with the uh, the weed scandal going on with, with uh, Zach Randolph, and we'll see how he deals with that. But Jarrell Martin, I guess, would be a guy that's also um, in contention for a power forward position. I would expect him to get more playing time as well. You know, he's been with Memphis for a, a little bit, so, you know, maybe he's the next guy up. I just, I really don't know. I don't know what's, what's going through the heads of, of Memphis Grizzlies, um, you know, personnel and their staff. Because even a guy like Jarrell Martin hasn't played a bunch. They just, a lot of these guys just haven't had a lot of NBA experience with a lot of minutes. And, and Gasol and Conley are the guys that are, you know, the big names that have played a lot. Mario Chalmers also will help with that. Tyreek uh, Evans and Ben McLemore have also gotten a lot of time. Parsons is another guy there. But other than that, you know, a lot of these guys haven't really had... Uh, a role as a starter they've been you know role players and even if they're not role players they're almost below role players at times haven't even played very much uh as part of the rotation so um i don't know if memphis can make the playoffs this year it's going to be interesting to watch they just don't have the veterans anymore and that's still a good thing they got younger but that's just how it's going to be and we look at marcus Saul, the oldest player as of right now if i'm not mistaken for the franchise marcus Saul is arguably the best you know one of the best centers in the league in my personal opinion he's been able to you know, ex expand his game to three-point line, great jump shooter, excellent work in the post, was one time a defensive player of the year winner, a good free throw shooter, he can rebound the basketball, not exceptional in that area, 
very good passer. I could make the argument that Marcus Saul is the best center in the league. That's how highly I think of him. Um, I, I know some people say Demarcus Cousins. I don't see it personally, but uh, that's just how I feel on the situation. So it, it's great to have Marcus Saul on this team as an All Star, first team All NBA player at one point, um, Defensive Player of the Year, like I mentioned earlier. And he, he's really just a great player to watch. Really fun to watch in the post and scoring. Uh, the basketball, to be honest with you, I mean, there's not a lot of centers I'd rather watch than Marcus Saul. Excellent footwork in the post. Uh, really awesome to, to watch him play and, and go up against uh, some of the best centers in the league and make them look foolish at times. So um, Marcus Saul, great player from Memphis. He's going to continue to be that, and that's why a guy like Gasol and Conley, or guys like Gasol and Conley, even with the p players they have right now, they still have a chance at making the playoffs because of those guys. And uh, David Fisdale, as well as the head coach, has, has been pretty solid. So, you know, he's gained a little bit of a reputation for being solid. So, you know, they still have a chance there. Um, but, again, we'll just have to see. And Brandon Wright, I talked about this earlier. I expect him uh, being another kind of guy who's pretty much a veteran, uh, given the roster they have, um, that he will be the backup center to <coughs> Marcus Saul, <coughs> which is not really too big of a surprise. Given you know what he's been able, what he's you know played in the league and, and what he's been able to do in the league, and not that he's been a starter for a consistent amount, but I just think that he's the next closest guy that's gonna uh, uh, be there for uh, Memphis this season, this next upcoming season. But that basically will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. You know, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more 2017-2018 NBA roster breakdowns for Memphis Grizzlies fans out there. I know it's gonna be, it, it could be a tough season. It's just, it really depends how the young players mesh. I feel like they just have so much uh, inexperience in general at, at so many positions and a lot of things up in the air. I don't know how it's going to translate for them. Um, let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'm completely off. Maybe Grizzlies fans are extremely confident with their chances and what they have going right now at the roster. I feel like a lot is kind of up in the air and, and not really smooth and gelled together. And that's for a lot of teams, but for Memphis, I just feel like the lack of experience is going to be tough, and the Western Conference has gotten even more difficult. Um, if Gasol or Conley goes down, uh, this season could you know, be over in a hurry for in terms of playoff contention. But that will be the conclusion of the video. Once again, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and yep, thanks for watching.